Hello and welcome to the Ketogenic Diet Show. I am here today with a very special guest, Dr. Heidi Hook, who's a naturopathic doctor in Northern California, who I've been working with for several years now, and I'm so excited to interview her because she has some really special pieces that will help you put together what is underlying the root cause of your health problems. So I am delighted to be here with Heidi today. Um, you can find me at www.ketogenicdietcoach.com. Again, I'm Mary Beauchamp, a registered nurse, therapeutic nutritionist, and certified GAPS practitioner, which stands for Gut and Psychology Syndrome. So here in our practice, we like to work with the gut and brain connection. And so we put a great emphasis on healing the metabolism and the digestive tract. So Heidi, thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you, I'm so happy to be here. I just want to start by asking you a couple of questions about how, as the curious naturopath <laughs> that you are, how you sort of help to understand sort of what's going on underneath the surface when somebody comes in with a health challenge or they're not feeling well or they're not sleeping well or maybe they're gaining weight. Um, there's so many common threads that could be factored into that and why that might be happening. And so what, what are some of the things that you like to do to start things in a positive direction so that you can really find out what's going on underneath the covers or on a more of a biochemical level? That is a great question, Mary. And you know, I have been a naturopath for 20, I think 24 years now. And I feel like it has just been in these last few years that, you know, all of those pieces keep are coming back, are coming into alignment, and um, really getting some deep understanding of what makes us tick and what how we can get optimal. So when people come in, everybody is different, um, and they have different issues, they have different um, different symptoms. Um, but the one thing that we all have in common is we have the same biochemical pathways. So we have the same biochemistry. And so that is where I start. Um, I don't go trace, chasing zebras off of symptoms and trying to treat symptoms. I mean, if there's a symptom that's on fire that we really need to calm down, yes, we can do that herbally, naturally, uh, diet-wise. But the, my number one goal is to really look at the biochemistry at that foundational level um, because that is the one thing that we all have in common. And when our biochemical pathways get out of balance, that's what creates inflammation and imbalance and then disease and symptoms. Mm. And so there's so much to those biochemical pathways. There's your nutrient status um, and there is your genetics. And the way those two interplay has, has kept my attention for the last seven years. It is absolutely mind-blowing and it's so fun that I absolutely love this medicine. Um, so looking at the micronutrient panel, um, because I can actually test 35 different nutrients at a cellular level. So that's the 95% of your nutrient status. What's in your blood is probably 1%. And um, so people come in and say, well, my doctor told me that I'm high in this due to the blood draw um, that they looked in my serum. And I'm like, well, I don't care about that because that was one point in time. This micronutrient panel looks at a cellular level. And so it tells me the last four to six months of your nutritional status. Now those nutrients are important because those are the cofactors that your enzymes need to run those pathways. So that is how your body makes your body healthy and happy is being able to have those nutrients and those nutrients come from our food right and and that's why Mary your nutrition is so important because if you're not getting the nutrients at that foundational level from the good foods then our biochemistry isn't going to run at a foundational level and our body starts to talk to us with fatigue and headaches and joint pain and PMS and you know the list goes on so the, I think to me the foundational level is that do you have the nutrients that you need to make your body healthy and happy? And then the second part, which I've been having so much fun looking at, is your genetics. Now the genetics are, you know, you're half your mom and you're half your dad, and that is never changing. That's a done deal. 
but the genetics can impact the enzymes that regulate your biochemistry. So that biochemistry, I think of it as a roadmap. So if you open a map up and you look at a city, you have all these streets and you have stoplights and stop signs and the streets are the pathways and the stop signs are the enzymes that regulate the traffic. So if you have a genetic variant that is going to speed up an enzyme, or slow down an enzyme, that's like driving through town and one stoplight is 70% greener, so it's always green, and another traffic uh, stop sign or traffic light is 70% slower, um, you can see how on a Sunday, dri Sunday drive, it would probably be pretty easy to drive through town. But when stress is high, meaning like on a Friday rush hour traffic, it could create disaster and there'd be block or backups and traffic jams and people are going to be angry and and that's exactly kind of what happens in our biochemistry and so then the question is what genetic variances are getting impacted or what nutrients do you not have to make those pathways run and when we're talking about well-being and and especially a uh, weight and, and, and having your optimal, or being your optimal self, which includes your optimal weight, it includes, you know, are you breaking down your inflammation? And are you able to detoxify? And are you able to make your body healthy and happy? So there's so much that goes into um, having a healthy body. The first one is your emotions. Um, and if you are emotionally stressed, um, then your body is always going to be in this sympathetic mode and it's not going to lose weight, it's not going to want to detox, and it's not going to want to build a healthy body. And that includes anxiety, depression, insomnia, worry, attention deficit, all of those things keep you in this sympathetic mode. You have to be in a parasympathetic or this calming mode in order for your body to heal and um, and be able to detoxify. So that's the first place. And you can actually have nutrient deficiencies that promote anxiety and all of those insomnia. You can also have genetic variances that promote more anxiety, depression, insomnia, ADHD, all attention deficit, all of those things. And so those are some of the things we look at. Now, when we think about inflammation, if your body is inflamed, again, you're not gonna be able to um, clean up, you're not going to be able to detoxify, you're not going to be able to build your body, and you're actually creating inflammation. Now, no one really talks about, um, you know, you'll see your doctor and they say, well, you have inflammation. Or anything, if you've had a diagnosis, anything ending in itis is inflammation of. And no one talks about what is specifically the chemicals that are creating inflammation. And through the genetic pathways, we can actually see those chemicals that you may not be able to be breaking, you may not be able to break down, that then are creating uh, inflammation. And I tell people it's like a machine gun of inflammation that's attacking your gut, your nervous system, your adrenals, and um, and your your body in general. And there are six different chemicals that we look at, um, which is really specific. So that's where it gets really exciting. And so the, and then the second part or the third part I always look at is, can you detoxify? Because we live in a toxic world um, and we're, and in order to detoxify, we need the nutrients that we get from our diet. And we also need to know that our enzymes are functioning optimally. And so if you have a genetic variant that is down-regulating some of those detox pathways, then you're not going to be able to detoxify very well. And those are the people that, you know, they're like, oh yeah, I know I need to eat organic. I don't feel well if I eat a lot of preservatives. But even people that carry a little extra weight and they can't lose weight, because in order to lose weight, in order to lose a pound of fat, you have to detox a pound of toxins. And that's kind of the way I look at it. And so, um, when people come in, those are those those big areas that I really am uh, focused on to make sure at, in just at, at a foundational level, is your body 
functioning optimally at that kind of a at the biochemical level. Mm. That's really interesting, Heidi. So I think what you're saying is that even though you may have a good diet and you may be doing sort of all the right things in terms of eating organic, healthy, you know, local farm fresh vegetables and produce and meats, you still could have a genetic variant that doesn't allow your body to break down the nutrient in your food and actually absorb it into your cells because you lack that enzyme. Is that what, is that what you're yeah. saying? Okay. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's true. I have seen so many patients and they have stellar diets and they're still really sick. I mean, they're doing everything right. And they're I'm like, it's not about your diet. Um, but you have to have that foundational piece. And there's definitely a, many of us that I, many people that I've seen that I'm like, yeah, it is about your diet, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? You, you can't eat that stuff and think that you're going to be healthy. And I also don't think that in our world today, you can only, you can eat healthy and think that that's going to be enough. I think that that's a foundational piece, but I think that our our food isn't doesn't have the nutrients that we need to function optimally. But yes, you're right. You can have now a genetic variant where your body can't take the raw material that you get from your diet and make it into an activated nutrient that your body needs. And those can be your folate, your B12, your B5, your vitamin A, your choline, your glutathione, carnitine. I mean, those are just some of the vitamin D. Um, those are some that I think about that you can have deficiencies in those areas and that can be wreaking havoc um, on, uh, on all of your systems. And how, how many of you out there listening to this have gone to the aisle in the health food store and you are looking at all the supplement bottles and wondering based on something you heard or you read, what you need what are you lacking and what should you be supplementing and the truth is is that you don't really know unless you test and that's why I find this test to be so remarkable and so profound because so many people are guessing in the aisles wondering what sort of supplement they're supposed to be taking and I can't say enough about the um, the value of this test this micronutrient panel that tests these 35 different micronutrients on a cellular level Um, because what we don't know is that we might be making things worse and so we might be taking a a supplement that can't get absorbed it's not in the right form and so to have that data and to also know the genetic pathways that might be influencing the enzyme production that doesn't allow you to absorb certain things are these two really critical pieces that can profoundly change your health if you have a map, a road map, and that's really what these two things provide. And of course, somebody who can interpret that data for you, which I'm so grateful that Heidi is, is um, so passionate about this and so on fire about learning the details and the in-depth um, information that can be gained from these two tests. So yeah. thank you for offering that to the world, Heidi, because it's really hard to find um, somebody who can put these pieces together. And it may not be nutrient-based and it may not be genetic-based, but those are two really important foundational pieces that give us such a, a window into the biochemistry when we have that information. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think that you know one of the reasons I like working with you is because there's so much confusion around what diet I should be eating, right? There's, is it keto, is it not keto, is it vegan, is it, you know, is it a combination? And I think that um, these tests give us those answers, you know, because I walk into a health food store and I don't even walk in the in the supplement aisle because I get overwhelmed. <laughs> and I'm a naturopath, because I'm like, oh my God. And so, and people come in and they go, what do I need? I said, I don't know what you need, let's test. Because I don't even know, and I don't want to waste your money supplementing something that doesn't uh, that I don't even know if you need it or not and so I think a lot of money is wasted because you because people think okay I need this and when we can actually test and treat specifically we get people there faster now the other thing about the diet that I think is so crucial is that there are so many people there's so many theories and about what diet is better and and what we're we should be doing um, but there's actually looking at the genetics. You can I can now see that. Oh, you know what? You really shouldn't eat a lot of meat. Meat needs to be a condiment because you can't convert that all that methionine, um, and that's going to be really inflammatory to your body. Um, or 
oh my gosh, you know what? You can't make these really critical nutrients and so you're gonna have to get it from a meat source or you're gonna have to supplement. And I think that is another, you know, and so, it's so amazing because people will go, I knew that I couldn't eat meat. I knew it. Or other people are like, I know that I need to eat meat. And, um, and so it isn't a one diet fits all. And it is, um, it does come down to your genetics and what your body is, is needing to be optimal. And so I think that's why some of these tests are so kind of mind boggling for me, so mind blowing, because they're so exciting. And it is really down to that um, specific, personalized, there's not one diet for everybody. And, um, and it's also, you know, a different diet for the different season of your life. Mm -hmm. And so just because you have a genetic variant doesn't mean it's turned on and it's active. So you may need some of those meat proteins when you're younger, but as those variances get, as you get older and they get turned on, then your diet needs to change for your biochemistry that is changing. So, um, but it is really, um, because you can really look at personalized um, nutritional supplementation and personalized diet, which I'm sure makes your job also so much easier. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. in that. It's so nice to have that information because then, you know, what if somebody has high iron and you're telling them that they should be getting their protein from meat sources, um, at, you know, as opposed to red meat versus chicken or fish or even plant-based proteins. Um, and all of that's possible if you know that genetic code. Um, and it just makes our job so much easier. Yeah. And there is so much talk nowadays about uh, protein and autophagy and mTOR and all of these things that are now becoming so available, this information in the scientific literature, super exciting. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate that you mentioned um, the timing of, of the, the life cycle and how, you know, if you are a pregnant woman, obviously you're gonna have different protein needs or a growing child. Uh, than somebody who's sedentary and elderly or um, a menstruating woman versus somebody who's gone through menopause. And so all of these things make a difference where protein becomes the catalyst for so many different biochemical pathways. And we wanna make sure that, you're in, that we're looking at your particular phase in your life. What are your needs? What is the best source of protein for you based on your genes? Um, and then being able to tailor that to your activity um, and to, you know, really what's going on in your biochemistry because, you know, some protein for somebody might be great, but more protein that isn't necessarily better. Mm -hmm. uh, protein promotes growth and there's certain times in your life when you need to grow and promote the growth of, of cells and, and repair and, and even muscle tissue if you're, say, a bodybuilder, for example. And then there's times in your life when you don't need that much protein and it can turn on all sorts of unhealthy pathways in your body that promote the growth of, say, tumor cells or cancer cells that are unhealthy um, cellular growth. So looking at all those factors really is, is so helpful in putting together a customized nutrition plan. Right. Which is, I think, though I, we, I think we make such a great team, right? <laughs> because I can look at this part and then you can really dive in with uh, individual diet to make somebody. Um, and because and what's also interesting is that, you know, when you get to that individual diet that's really specific, people usually really love it, right? I mean, because their body is craving it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have lost our ability to really understand what it is our body is telling us and especially the people that eat sugar. Because when you eat sugar, your body craves sugar and that's all you can think about. But once you get off that sugar, then you're, um, you're, you can actually start listening to what your body is trying to tell you because our body has that inherent wisdom of what the foods it wants. And so it's really about cleaning it up and, and teaching people to listen to what it is our body needs. And then you start going, oh yeah, my body doesn't feel good when I eat those foods. And it does feel really good, and why oh my God, I'm craving this. Um, and so that's what is really interesting. So, yeah, that's that's a great uh, point that you bring up because oftentimes we don't realize how bad we felt until we start to feel better and better and better, and then we sort of slip off the rails and and go back to eating something that we used to eat, and we can't believe how terrible we feel. And yet that's what we've been we've been eating up until you know for years up until we changed our diet. Mm -hmm. Um, and so once you start cleaning the house and you really prompt those internal um, pathways for, for autophagy and, and self-cleaning, if you will, 
um, at, at a deeper level, not just sweeping the floor, but actually getting under the carpets and behind the, you know, the furniture and, and that sort of thing. Um, then you really start to change the way you feel on a deeper level. And when you do go back and eat something that doesn't work for you, your body will definitely let you know. And that can be um, a good thing or a bad thing, right? So some people say, oh, I used to be able to eat pizza all the time and now I can't even have a piece without feeling horrible. Uh -huh. So it's a self-regulating process. It's like you can't really put the genie back in the bottle. It's like once you once you get the, the, the good housekeeping done, um, number one, you don't want to go back to eating the way you were because that's going to lead you back to a disease and, and feeling poorly. Um, and then the other thing is, is that your body becomes your most reliable guide for what is right for you and what isn't a fit for you. So it does become this conversation that you can have with your body about how you want to live your life. And so that's the most um, important thing I think that people can get out of consistently making a change in their diet and their lifestyle and the way that they um, relate to stress in their life. And so when we start to change these fundamental relationships uh, with our environment, with our food and with stress, we really, um, we, we have new tools and a new way that we can relate to our body that that is like nothing else. And if we can come to rely and trust our body as a guide and a source of wisdom as it should be, um, then I then I feel like that is, is just a fundamental piece that is missing from uh, traditional medicine as uh, we've entrusted into a, a, another form of, of care that, that isn't um, based on self-interest in or self-wisdom or self-insight and self-mastery. I think it's, I think that's really important. I think it, to listen to your body. And I think it's interesting because I just had a, just had a patient and I've seen this before when their cravings are, um, you know, so this one patient had, um, she was eating meat, 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 meat. She loved meat. Um, and her, when we did her blood work, her iron was high. But, and, but so I'm like, so you really can't eat that red meat. You can't eat those iron rich foods anymore. And you could just see, she was like, oh, but I love it. Well, looking at her micronutrient panel, her B12 was tanked. Mm. And so I'm like, well, that's why you're craving the meat is because your B12 is so low. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then she couldn't process the iron. And so it was um, kind of like clotting in her body, creating inflammation. Mm. So it was one food that had high B12, but also had too much iron. And so um, now we can supplement the B12 for her and then she can ho hopefully get that iron depleted. But that is where I think testing and you can help that because she had her, her intuition. She yeah. knew she needed the B12 mm -hmm. and yet it had this iron with it. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think it's a lost art and I don't think that, I think a lot of us sometimes we think, oh, we, sh we should know what our body wants. but. It is a lost art, and sometimes it's very confusing. And so, if we're able to test and help, you know, guide people through this, um, like this is what your body is needing, and these are the foods that you can get it from, or if you have genetic variances, you're not going to get it from those foods, and you need to take a supplement. That is incredibly empowering. It's also incredibly validating mm -hmm. um, for people to go, oh my God, I'm not crazy because I keep eating this food and it's making me sick, but I can't figure out why I want it so much, you know, other than, you know, chocolate cake. I mean, we know <laughs> that, right? But, um, but all the other foods, it's like, so it really is a way to dial it in to really make it um, uh, uh, personalized and it's very empowering and very validating. I think that's the other piece that people come away um, if from both of us knowing that, oh my God, this is exactly what I need to be doing because my body and my biochemistry and my testing is validating what I know to be true. And so it's very empowering, very validating, and um, people then have a direction. Right, they have all the tools they need to really manage and become the master of their own health and really put the driving, you know, the steering wheel in their own hands. Um, with the tools that we have for testing and also the simple tools we have for um, checking blood sugar and ketones and and you know the scale is the weight coming off is it not are you in ketosis are you not are you cycling are you not um, and you know knowing what your macronutrients are 
um, is such a, a great uh, service that we have access to these tools now. You know, we used to have to guess, you know, how, how much protein and carbs and fats should we be eating um, to actually optimize our health. And now we, we have apps on our phones and we have all sorts of, you know, wonderful um, guidance systems in place that we can tap into. And, and that's what I like to teach people is how they can take the reins and how they can use these tools to always know where they are with their biochemistry and they never have to guess. And then the beauty of it is we can test them again in six months after they've changed their diet and see, okay, what's your body weight doing now? And how are your, you know, how are you feeling and how is your sleep? And um, really, have you lost weight or not? And these are really important biomarkers that, that we now can test for and, and even look back and see how their micronutrients have changed. You know, maybe their levels have gone up, maybe some have gone down, and we can keep fine tuning and fine tuning things so that people have um, an experience of healthy aging and really promoting longevity, which uh, in those are probably the most of our clients or, or people over 50. You know, many, many of whom are women over 50, I would say, is, is most of the clients that we see. But um, these are people that are really interested in making the most of the, of the rest of their life. And oftentimes our health is fine until we're 50 or 60 and then things sort of catch up and we don't really understand why we can't do the same things that we've been doing our whole life. And something has to give and something has to change. Or they start becoming their parents. Right, yeah. they're like, okay, well, I've done all this, and I'm still, dang it, I'm still becoming some of the, um, I'm becoming the diseases that my parents had. Right, and um, and what what I think is so fascinating is that, like I said, we can't change your genes, but we can change up to seventy percent of how they manifest, which means we can turn like you don't have to have that diabetes you don't and 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 you don't have to have the high blood pressure and the high cholesterol and the arthritis and the um mental uh, de cognitive decline and all of those things um, and we can really be at our optimal health um, i think some people you they forget what it feels like to be really vibrant mm. and um, and shining. You can kind of, when you walk around, you can see people that are really healthy and they glow. And um, I think a lot of us have lost that glow and we forget that we can glow. And so when we start to optimize and we clean out at a cellular level because we know how to do it now, for specifically for each person, um, people do start to feel that vibrancy and that deep glow where they just, you know, I tell it's like, you know, when you get into a new car and everything is clean and works and that's how people start to feel that, that new, not the new car smell because that's not <laughs> good for you, but that new car feel where everything is just works and it's clean. That's how people start to feel in their body again. I know when I was doing through the genetics and looking at my own genetics and um, really being able to detox at a cellular level, which is the deepest cleanse that you can ever do. Um, I mean, I used to do all these liver cleanses and gut cleanses and blah, 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 and I'd always get people so far. And now when I know when I can look at your genetics and I can see at a cellular level where people aren't able to detoxify, I can get them that next level and they start to feel that vibrancy and they're like, you know what, I haven't felt this good in since my teens. I haven't felt this good in my 20s. And I'm like, yep, this is how I used to feel in my 20s where I was just bursting with energy mm. and I needed to go do stuff. I couldn't just sit down um, and it and we forget. And then once we forget how good we felt, then we start incorporating the bad foods again. And then we start to get tired. And then you're like, God, why am I so tired? And why do I just, and they're like, oh yes, I need to get and clean my diet back up and get back on the, get back on the train. Right. You know? What do you mean when you say that the detox pathways aren't functioning optimally? Like, what would you do to to optimize, optimize that, that? A, a detox pathway that might like a common one that you see a lot of that um, prevents people from actually being able to access that vibrancy? Okay, so um, there are a couple phases of detoxification, and so first it's do you have the nutrients to make those pathways run? Um, but and then is do you have the genetic variances that are slowing down those enzymes? Mm -hmm. But one of the enzymes that I see a lot is um, it's called superoxide dismutase. And so when we live, 
we eat food, our body makes energy, and we have this biochemical exhaust. Mm -hmm. That biochemical exhaust is inflammatory. And no one is talking about what is the chemical. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's, there's one chemical that is one of my six that's called superoxide. And we create it, we, it's an exhaust. And so our body is very wise, and it has an enzyme put in place called superoxide dismutase, SOD. And so, and that enzyme, it's supposed to break down the superoxide, which is like inflammation, and break it down eventually to water and get out of your body. Well, if you have some nutrient deficiencies, like some minerals deficiencies, or glutathione deficiencies, and you have a variant around that enzyme, and you can't break that inflammation down very well. And there's some people that I've seen that are like 70% decreased ability to break that inflammation down. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't break that down, it also, also can, can get converted to another inflammatory product that I tell people is like the machine gun of inflammation. And those are the people that are, they hurt, they are in pain, they have headaches, they're exhausted, they eat well, they may have multiple chemical sensitivities, um, or they go to the gym and they work out and they eat really well and they can't lose weight. They actually gain weight when they work out. And it's in maddening. Mm -hmm. They go, okay, I'm gonna get a trainer, I'm gonna do everything right, and they lose, you know, a half a pound in a month, right? And they're just going crazy and um, they're building muscle, but they're still not really losing the fat that they should be losing. And I look at those people and I'm like, it's because they're toxic. They're not able to detox, and so the body, the, the fat becomes the storage place for toxins. Mm -hmm. And so when you're toxic and you can't detoxify, our body puts it there because it wants to keep those toxins out of our blood mm -hmm. and out of our organs. And so the fat becomes a storage place for toxins. Mm -hmm. And so you can look at your fat and go, thank you for keeping mm -hmm. me healthy. We need to now um, figure out your detox pathways, optimize them so you can detoxify so that when you do a weight loss program, it actually works. And I've had some people that have done, you know, they've done keto, they've done their perfect diets, and 90% and of the patients, I think keto works great. Short term, right? It's not a long term fix, but phenomenal to get people where they need to go. But there's definitely been some people that don't, nothing's working, right? Even keto isn't working. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we look at a little deeper and we find these enzymes that are, their body's not making. And so, the, the, the beautiful thing is that if your body's not making that, and depending on which variant it is and what enzyme it is, we can actually give your body the enzyme that your body needs that's not making very well, or we give your body the, the byproduct. And so we can change, that's how we can change it up to 70%. People start detoxing at a cellular level, and oh my gosh, they start losing weight. Mm -hmm. It's working, they feel successful, and they feel great, and they're vibrant again. So that's just one area that we've been working on that we're seeing phenomenal results with. That's awesome. Thank you, Heidi, for sharing that. So if you're listening and you're struggling and keto isn't working for you, low carb isn't working, you've tried all those other things, um, these are some of the deeper layers that you might want to explore because there might be something else going on that's really blocking you from being able to be successful losing weight. So thank you for sharing that. That's so important. And yeah, yeah I, I just am... So excited that you were able to share this message with the world, Heidi. And is there anything else that you might want to add before we end our conversation? My podcast is The Curious Naturopath. Mm. And I think that's because I'm so curious. And I just don't buy, oh, you're just getting older. Oh, that's it. I just, I don't. And so when, um, and so I'm always looking a little deeper, a little deeper, a little deeper. And so if you can't find the answer, keep looking. There's somebody out there that has an answer. Look at the genetics, look at your nutrients. Them, and, and so, and I just don't take no for an answer. I, I don't, um, because I think that there's a way that our body can heal. Our body and our mind and our spirit want to heal, just as I think our planet wants to heal. Mm -hmm. And so my goal is that if we can heal every body, um, mind, body, spirit, mm -hmm then we can come together collectively to heal our planet. Mm, that's beautiful. 
Thank you so much for sharing that, Heidi. I, I think that a lot of people feel that um, the way that they feel is just a normal part of aging and this is just what happens and I, I have to learn to live with it and you don't take that for an answer. I so. don't take it for an answer. <laughs> we are so delighted that you're, you have your services here to offer and can really help people achieve an, an, a next level of, of health and vibrancy as they age. So thank you, Heidi. Thank and you. Check out The Curious Naturopath and find more podcasts by Dr. Heidi Hook. So thank you, Heidi. Again, I'm Mary Beauchamp, registered nurse, therapeutic nutritionist, and GAPS, gut and psychology syndrome practitioner. So you can find me at www.ketogenicdietcoach.com. Thank you so much for listening and have a wonderful day.